Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. We uh, are in another up week in the markets this week. I suppose I, I shouldn't be complaining. I don't think that many of you are. I mean, it's obviously been a wonderful time in the equity markets, and uh, we, we still have you know a little bit of time left here into February, but I comment in the Dividend Cafe uh, com written entry this week that uh, the way January and February went last year compared to where we are now, it, it, it really feels like a millennium um, away, not, not a year. The thing I want to talk to you guys about uh, this week has to do with a risk metric that is taking up the bulk of my uh, mental space right now. The, uh, I think you, uh, from listening to these week by week and from the clients that we converse with, the extensive writing we do, there, there's not a lot of secrets in what, in what is going on in our um, approach and our positioning and our perspective on capital markets and particularly our execution on those things, how we're going about taking action in our client portfolios and the responsibility we have to manage and steward your capital. Um, but it may be important for you to understand that from a risk standpoint, when we talk about being generally cautious, being optimistic, and yet conscientious of valuation and all those things, I think it's helpful. I think it's important. But I want to say that there are, there are realities as a contrarian investor, as one who generally believes that over a longer period of time, acting against the crowd and not with the crowd is the superior or more profitable means of investing. Um, when we see heavy flows into asset classes, we get very concerned. More common, the reciprocal of that is, is the way to, to make money. It's when we see a lot of flows out of asset classes that generally we see an opportunity. One of the areas that I think speaks to complacency in a market, see, see we talk about uh, euphoria. Are we, do we believe that there's uh, people are too optimistic about the outlook for stocks since Trump's been elected, uh, maybe even before Trump was elected. Uh, equities had had a nice recovery throughout most of 2016 after the brutal start to the year. And the price level doesn't tell us that. Stock prices going higher doesn't tell us that people are overly euphoric. Uh, generally, a lot of flows, um, people pouring money into equity mutual funds or something like that would tell us, but that's not happening. That isn't the situation right now. Flows have picked up. A lot of people who were not in the rally have decided to join the rally. That always happens. And the interpretation from what we see right now is I feel completely heartbroken for the people whose advisors uh, did not keep them from making such massive behavioral mistakes. And I also think that the flows are not really all that indicative of an excessive euphoria. So when the flows are not really telling us a lot, stock prices in and of themselves they don't show us that things are euphoric because the valuations are not blown through the roof. There, there's other things that we want to look to to measure the complacency or apathy that capital markets may have, that investors in capital markets may have about risk. When margin levels are going through the roof because people are buying more and more securities on borrowed money. That's not happening excessively either right now. The, high, the peak of that behavior was back in 1999 in the dot-com era, and it, it ended as well the way it should have. Um, but I think that the high-yield bond spreads, and so I'm setting up a concept here that is pretty understandable. Hopefully so far everything I've said makes sense where I want to go with it, but then I'm ending with something that does get a little more academic or a little more financial jargon-y, and I, I ask you to bear with me. But the spread between what an investor will receive to buy very uh, junky corporate credit, low quality corporate credit, the debt, that spread relative to what the United States government would be giving on shorter term treasuries. You assume that there will be a higher yield required to come into those investments. And how much higher is what we call the spread. And right now, those spreads have come down to 380 basis points, 3.8%. Um, a year ago, it was at 8%. Uh, it's, it's not where it was in 2007, which was the most cartoonishly stupid thing I've ever seen in my career, where it was barely 2.5% of a spread, meaning the investors were really requiring very little extra compensation relative to what the United States government would have been giving for a treasury bond. 
And, and it wasn't that that made it a bad investment or a good investment, it, it, although it, it, there's a, a particular ramification to the investment asset class itself, obviously. But I'm talking broader than that. I'm saying what it tells us about the overall risk level in the market. Um, excessively wide spreads generally means markets are overly cautious and excessively narrow spreads means may not be appreciating risk enough. So we want to be cautious, we want to be careful. Though the spreads right now have me concerned. They don't have me running to sell and reposition, but I am setting levels and I am making markers as to where we want to uh, make some actionable decisions around this. So I said a lot here today, all to make one particular point. We're taking very seriously the potential apathy around risk, and we recommend all investors do. But we also, in the meantime, fully want to participate where there is rationality to a, a movement up in stock prices. We are bullish on the U.S. economy right now. We are bullish on corporate America. Very encouraged today uh, by some of what I watched early this morning in the roundtable that President Trump had with some of the CEOs. Um, just interesting sentiment happening right now. Capital expenditures that we think are going to pick up. Increased use of steel to build pipelines. I mean, I could go on and on, so I'll stop there because once I get going, you won't stop me. My point being, I feel optimistic about a lot of things, but I don't want to become complacent about risk. I don't want high yield spreads going to 2.5%. So we got to watch those things. We have to do our job, and we will do it. We hope you have a great weekend. Look forward to connecting with you next week. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe.